Next on City TV, it's Murfreesboro Storytellers. Our special guest this month is Joseph Adelot, Planning Director for the City of Murfreesboro. Stay tuned. Welcome to Murfreesboro Storytellers. Our guest this month is Joseph Adelot, Planning Director for the City of Murfreesboro. Joseph, welcome to Murfreesboro Storytellers. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Now you've been with the City of Murfreesboro for 29 years. That's correct. And since 1991, I believe, as Planning Director. That's right. Needless to say, you have seen tremendous changes in this city during those years that you've been serving us. I absolutely have, literally, Every plan that has uh, come to the city has crossed my desk. Joseph, the, 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 the title planning director is certainly is very obvious. Tell us about some of the detail that you and your office get into in regard to planning for the city. Well, first of all, let me tell you about what our mission statement is, and that kind of helps put some perspective in it. Uh, the planning department's mission is to coordinate the physical development of the community. And that's it in a nutshell. It's uh, our mission, and it, it's easy to keep focus of that. We don't we don't recruit, but we do assist in recruiting. We don't develop, but we do assist in developing. Right. But what we do we do uh, coordinate, and we do re part of that is reviewing the plans, looking at the zoning, looking at the development standards, subdivision regulations, uh, how things are put together, and how they are planned. So, if Brian Hercules with the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce has a prospect for the community, an industrial prospect. He would call on your office and you would assist in making available to them any information about the community, I presume. Absolutely. And that information may include things like floodplain, location of railroad tracks, uh, what the zoning is, mm -hmm. uh, where landfills are, uh, all kinds of things that uh, we are able to map and able to provide through our geographic information system. We call it GIS. Uh, also from our, uh, what I call institutional knowledge, from having worked here, we have a knowledge of what's going on, what's around, who does what, Very and can give them great information on how to move forward with the project. Well, we are uh, televising from the third floor patio of the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce building overlooking the avenue and part of the, uh, the gateway development here, so it's a pro an appropriate location to have this discussion, I'd say. Oh, well, it is. Uh, this is uh, an area that has been so much to me and, and also to the city now. Uh, I think it's just great to, to be here and to, to be able to look out over it. It's wonderful. One more question about your department. How large a staff do you have? Well, in the planning section, there's only six of us. Okay. But there is also an engineering department, a transportation department. There's a GIS within the information technology. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people that I coordinate with very closely that are not within my budget area that are really sort of viewed as the planning engineering uh, department. And you report to the city manager, I presume? Yes, sir, and I the do. city council, right. Well, let's talk about this, this gateway development here. Uh, give us a little insight into how this all came about. I know it didn't just happen overnight, and it's just unbelievable what has taken place since it began. Well, the, the genesis of the gateway came about, I think in large part because of a vision that Mr. Haley, our former city manager, had and uh, the, the council that we had at that time and our former mayor, Mayor Joe Jackson. There was a recognition that Murfreesboro was, um, well, actually viewed as blue collar. And we didn't have a much uh, office space. We didn't have much white collar employment. We had some. Uh, certainly we had some very notable examples like uh, State Farm and MTSU, but it just wasn't um, what we were seeing in some of our peer communities. We, I think there was a view that we should uh, look to create a place where that would have a home in our community. We had the area out there off of Butler Drive that's industrial. We had the uh, uh, area up in Laverne and Smyrna that it's industrial, uh, warehousing. But there was a view that we need to create that place for the Class A office users. Uh, we also viewed that we need to have a better place for our hotels. We had hotels, but they weren't best located in their community. So there were a lot of things that were driving a, a need to, to maybe upgrade what we are. Also, we needed some good examples. Mm -hmm. we, it, it, when, when people would come to our community and they'd look around and see what we had, well, they would try to meet that standard. They didn't try to exceed that standard. Mm -hmm. They just met the standard. So we were always talking with them, but we weren't very effective in able to point to something in our community. One of the things that started out was what we called the Conference Center Project, and it, and it got off to a rocky start, but when it came back as the, uh, 
the Commerce Center, and then later dubbed the Gateway, it, it really took hold. And, and with our new um, mayor, Mayor Bragg, uh, when he came on board, wanted to do some master plan for the land that the city owned, uh, that would be east of Thompson Lane in the area where the hospital now lies. There was a, um, a recognition that this whole area, all the way out to the new interchange at uh, the uh, Interstate 24, was going to be a gateway into the city. So uh, we 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 own part of it, and we're able to place restrictions on it. And when I say we, I'm talking about the city, and and we did. And in order to protect it, and also to set the stage for the gateway, we adopted some gateway design overlay district regulations for the area all the way out to and past Interstate 24 right. along Medical Center Parkway. Uh, so that's sort of the, the genesis of it. How and many acres are involved in the in the gateway? Project, I guess. Also. I don't have a precise acreage, but it's in the order of about a thousand acres. You mentioned the city already owned part of it, and you acquired several other tracts of land, I believe, to put it all together. Oh uh, yes, we did. We uh, we owned part of it around the landfill, but of course uh, that area also included land that was formerly owned by the McFarland family, right. by the Swain family. Uh, at one point, there's some discussion about expanding the golf course over there, but all that all that took a different turn with the with the gateway project. Something I want to point out, and this is part of why we're here today, we're approaching our 10-year anniversary. Unbelievable. It has been 10 years since we adopted the gateway regulations, and most, most of the development, including the hospital, the avenues, embassy suites, this very building, the Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center, uh, the Physician's Plaza, the Stone Crest, the um, Murfreesboro Medical Clinic, all those have been built over this last 10 years and uh, all of them have been built to our gateway design overlay district regulation standards. And you mentioned the hospital a couple of times. Now it's St. Thomas Rutherford Hospital, I believe, with a new moniker. I believe that is you the correct know. name. Well, tell us about the GDO, the gateway design overlay. Now it's been 10 years since it's done and like any plan, I would assume after 10 years, maybe even lesser time, it needs to be re-looked at and revised, brought up to date. Absolutely, and that's part of what we're, we're looking at doing. The, the Gateway Design Overlay District actually incorporates an element of aesthetic review into our projects. It requires a more demanding landscaping standard. It requires a um, greater attention to detail. It requires more involvement from our planning commission. Uh, for instance, a typical site plan uh, in the city outside the Gateway requires one stop. If they've got their uh, plans in order, they, they move on to permitting. In the gateway, it requires two stop, an initial design review and a final design review. <clears throat> the um, expectation is that we're, we're looking at uh, coordinating very closely. We're paying attention to uh, traffic. We're paying attention to uh, coordinating landscaping plans. Uh, most of the time, we, uh, we have a high degree of success. Once in a while, we have a failure, but most of the time, people don't see our failures. We see them and, and recognize them, but try to learn from them. Something that we're, we're trying to do is maybe broaden uh, what the gateway allows. And that's part of uh, what we're, um, this initiative that I'm talking about. 10 years have passed, we're wanting to take stock of uh, what we've learned mm -hmm. and uh, what we're lacking and see how we can address those. Uh, and let me give you a for instance. The, uh, the gateway is primarily commercial property. Actually, a lot of the gateway, particularly east of Thompson Lane, is zoned light industrial. You wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that our hospital would be located in a light industrial zone. Wouldn't think that. Uh, and that happened because before it was annexed into the city, it was zoned light industrial. Okay. And it came in automatically zoned light industrial. And we've never changed that. And a hospital is permitted there. A lot of the land around it is industrial. In the city, we don't allow any kind of residential uses in the industrial zones. Uh, also, in our commercial highway, for instance, the area around the embassy suites and the uh, avenues, Although it will allow a hotel, it won't allow a, an apartment. It won't allow for luxury apartments, uh, any residential at all. So uh, we think one of the things that's missing is uh, residential uses mm -hmm. permitted in this district. We, we know it's missing because we have applicants who have come through and asked for some zoning changes to allow. We've got an apartment complex called Henley Station under construction right now. Uh, it was designed by Reagan Smith and uh, the uh, company's Lifestyles. They're bringing some uh, luxury uh, apartments. They are going to be the envy of our peer communities. Mm. 
I, I will predict that once that apartment complex is, well, actually they're already coming to visit, but once it's up, there will be uh, planners from uh, all of Middle Tennessee coming to look at it as a good example of a good example. Now, where is that to be located? It's located just to the east of here along Robert Rose, and you can see the oh, yes. buildings under construction right now just uh, on the north side of Medical Center Parkway. All right. Uh, so those guys had to go through a rezoning to be able to do a good example of a good example. So that is industrial now as far as it, zoning is concerned? Uh, a lot of it is actually commercial highway, commercial but highway. that was uh, also got the same problem, didn't allow residents. Okay. So one of the things we're looking at with uh, this is trying to get public input, trying to uh, seek out opinions of uh, stakeholders, uh, including residents, property owners, uh, people who do business in the, this area, and find out, well, do they want to open the door to residential? Hmm. I believe that it can be done very well, and I think that uh, it's a good model. The, um, the Henley Station project is a good model of what residential could be in this area. Um, it's very well amenitized, it's very well constructed, a very heavy masonry uh, uh, approach. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's the kind of project that fits the gateway and, and what the vision was from the very beginning. Uh, so uh, that's an example of, of one of the things we looked to change. Another thing, we're talking about making some changes to the regulations themselves in how we do business. Uh, I've, uh, during my uh, time that I've been applying the, these regulations and working with the applicants, often I deal with an um, engineer or an architect, or engineer okay. and an architect, and, and his uh, uh, client, and they come and visit. Well, when they get back to their office, they turn it over to the junior technician who gets to operate the computer to draw the project. He wasn't at the meeting. So they're trying to communicate to him what was said and I what see. was expected. So one of the things I want to do is to prepare the, uh, what I call the uh, technicians and the junior uh, members of the team okay. for how to succeed with our regulations. It's more of a cookbook and a checklist approach. This is what you do. This is what your plan needs to say. This is what your plan needs to convey. Mm -hmm. Uh, and give it to him in a checklist format so he doesn't have to wander through a, a, a set of regulations trying to find what it is he needs to do. How about the city zoning map? Can individuals find that? Uh, where can they find that? Oh, we, uh, we have, uh, uh, I guess by my standards, gone high tech on that. Sure. We have a website, the city's website right. at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov. I think I said that wrong. That's MurfreesboroTN.gov, one right, dot. Right, right. Uh, on our website, you can access the city's uh, GIS, and there is a copy of our zoning map. All right. Uh, it has other things like our uh, floodplains, a lot of the resources I have that I'm used sure. when I meet with uh, people who are interested in developing property. What about the GDO regulations, if somebody wants to get more information about that? Is that readily available? Uh, yes, it is. We, uh, the Gateway Design Overlay District regulations are contained in our zone ordinance, and it is also posted on our website. Uh, at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov. <laughs> um, it's also available in our office. If you uh, would like to visit our office, we have both the zone map posted on our uh, wall and available for people to see. We have a, a computer available to show people how to operate our website. And we have a hard copy text of the zone ordinance. And if someone wants to uh, call us, uh, we'll be glad to uh, talk with them about it. And uh, often we can even email them uh, excerpts from the ordinance if needed. If I understand some of these terms, you've got the, the uh, overlay for the area here, then you have the underlying uh, or base zoning. So I presume the overlay is a general coverage of the area, and then beneath that and under that, you have various divisions depending on the, the, the different zoning. Uh, that's correct. Is that a uh, and, and think about it like a, um, think about it like a floor. The floor is the base zoning. Okay. That's like commercial highway heavy industrial, light industrial, office general, uh, residential, single family, 15. Uh, those are all base zoning. You can do those. The um, overlay district is like a, uh, a, a throw rug that you throw out over a portion of your carpet and you add another degree of protection. So under the, uh, the land that's uh, under the uh, throw rug also it has to go through the gateway design overlay district regulations. It has additional standards it must meet in addition to the base zoning. It doesn't change the base zoning, but it applies additional regulations on top of it. I don't think you've mentioned mixed use district. That's one of the terms I see that be involved in these changes. Yes, that's something I want to come back to. I, I, I didn't say it, but I kind of I mentioned that I wanted to find out about the interest of the community in seeing residential uses. 
One of the hallmarks of a mixed use district is to see a variety of land uses. And not just uh, spatially and horizontally, but vertically. Okay. Uh, we have a development called uh, Gateway Village that's adjacent to the uh, hospital. And it includes apartments in the upstairs, and it includes commercial on the, on the first floor, offices and retail, All right. uh, restaurants. It's within walking distance to the hospital. It's a great companion use mm. because someone who may have employment at the hospital can have an apartment sure. right by, and they, if they're on call, for instance, they, they can go over to their apartment, and they're within just literally running distance of the, of the hospital. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, if uh, someone wants to rent one of these, say for instance they have a spouse that's going through um, treatments at the hospital, they could uh, have an apartment off-site that they could stay in and uh, uh, clean up, uh, and maybe a more of a short term, but it's, it's more than a hotel. They could maybe live there for a month or two, and it's a very convenient lane. So we're looking at this as a possibility in, in the uh, gateway. The idea of a vertical mix of uses. And, and, and a good example would be over beside the um, uh, Chop House restaurant, uh, which is also located in the Gateway on Thompson Lane in Medical Center. There's a land track behind it. There's something very appealing to me to be able to see a um, building constructed that would have on the first floor uh, restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, retail, uh, and then on the second and third, maybe a fourth floor, uh, uh, apartments or condominiums where people could live close by to the uh, amenities that are in the gateway. Now changes will need to be made in the regulations to allow this, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What we're contemplating is a series of amendments to our zoning ordinance. Right. And these would address these uh, changes that, that I've been referring to. Uh, one of the things that about changing the zoning ordinance, you just don't do it overnight and you don't do it the easy way. There is no easy way. Uh, our processes that we observe uh, that are required by both state law and our, and our local practices, uh, we'll expect that we'll have a neighborhood meeting, and we are going to have a neighborhood meeting. It will be on August 19th. And by neighborhood, do you mean in the Gateway area uh, meeting? Actually, when I say neighborhood, I'm talking about this area, but it's open to anybody that's interested. Sure. We generally expect that stakeholders who own property nearby or within an area will be more uh, attentive. But that's, uh, it will be a neighborhood meeting and anybody's interested. And it will be here at the chamber building. At the chamber building, that's the, my uh, next question. In uh, the rooms <laughs> A and B. And it will be from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. It's not going to be a public hearing in the sense that we're going to invite the public to speak for or against it like right. we often see for at the city council. But it will be a more of an open house meeting where people can learn. Sure. That's, that's one of the things that I've, I've, I, I know, and that is that if we can help people to know what's going on, they can participate more effectively. Sure makes a difference. So that's the first objective. We want to set people up to participate in the process effectively. Right. So we will be having a neighborhood meeting. People, it will be at 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock on August 19th, uh, later this month. And uh, that will be followed uh, by a, a period of study with the uh, staff. Uh, we're going to see what we gain at the neighborhood meeting and we will tweak the regulations if they're, or, or, or decide whether or not to pursue mm -hmm. it. Then we'll report back to the Planning Commission. All right. Now, in prep, after the um, neighborhood meeting, we're going to invite people to give us written comments. We're going to allow them to send us emails to a uh, website location where they can uh, send us their comments to help us. We will have maps. We will have text. We will also have a handout. One of the things I'm working on right now is a Q&A piece, a question and answer piece, that we will be able to email people to get them more information. Right. Uh, it will also be something that will give them a quick breakdown of what's going on. Uh, we hope to have that available uh, near the 1st of August for distribution. But prior to that, that neighborhood meeting, it will be available? Yes, it will be. Mm -hmm. And we will actually hand it out at the meeting. And maybe even uh, we'll even ask uh, Paul Latour to have it available here at the Visitor Center to people who might just walk in and interest. That'll be excellent because I'm sure they have people that do walk in looking for information like that. Then after you've had the neighborhood meeting, you can have the input from the public and you consider all that, you make changes or don't make certain changes, what's the next step? The next step will be to have a public hearing with the Planning Commission. Right. And at that point, we will ask people to come to a formal, advertised uh, public hearing and Tell the Planning Commission what you like, what you don't like, ask questions if you want to. Uh, this will be the uh, public hearing that the Planning Commission will have in preparation to making a recommendation to our City Council. 
So after that, after the plan commission makes its recommendation, assuming it moves forward, and the plan commission may just decide to table it off, I, although I kind of doubt that. I think there's an, this is a good project. Uh, if it goes on the council, the council will have another public hearing before it considers an ordinance to change the regulations. The planning commission is composed of private citizens, right? Uh, yes, it is, uh, and so the city council in some respects, but the two members of the city's planning commission are also city council members. And that timetable stretches you well into the fall then? Yes, looking in the, ahead into the calendar, uh, typically a rezoning, once we take it to the planning commission, is going to take about uh, four months to do. So uh, looking backwards, uh, looking somewhere around January 1, these regulations could become okay. effective uh, if, uh, if they move forward. Uh, planning commission could have a public hearing sometime around October. And will these changes, if they're made, will they affect land outside of the GDO? Not at all. Not at all. What we're recommending is that these regulations apply only within the, the existing boundaries of the gateway. I do expect that someday there will be people who will um, ask that their property be included in the gateway overlay district regulations. Uh, because I think once they see how the mixed use district works, if assuming we do adopt it, they, they will be inspired to want to be part of it. And it's my belief that the mixed use will be a good thing, but only if it has the high degree of scrutiny that the gateway district regulations offer. One question you suggested was <clears throat> to ask you, how, how is the proposed mixed use district different from CH, OG, and L1, or LI, I guess it is. Light industrial, yes. Light industrial. Uh, elaborate on those terms. Well, a couple of differences. One of them is that in the um, commercial highway, light industrial, office general districts, there are no residential uses permitted. The mixed use district would propose to have residential uses. So that's one big difference right okay. there. The uh, heavy industrial zone allows, well, or the light industrial zone, allows manufacturing. We're proposing to cut manufacturing out. And we're not talking about laboratories. Uh, or uh, engineering offices, but we're talking about manufacturing where there is heavy shipping into it mm -hmm. and uh, the idea that there would be distribution from it, uh, warehousing. We're looking to cut those type of uses out of the mixed use districts. Those wouldn't exist. Right. That's allowed in the light industrial. Uh, in the uh, commercial highway, there are certain uses that uh, just don't seem to have a compatibility with uh, some of the things we've begun to see in the gateway in terms of what we want to see. So we'll cut them out. So, But the uses we like, like the hotels, mm -hmm. like the uh, idea for some um, mixed-use residential, uh, we do want to allow in the mixed-use district. And you have several hotels on, on the, in the planning stages, do you not, for the Gateway area, or have been? Oh, yes, we do. Actually visible from right here, I can see that there's one under oh, construction right now. Right. It's about 100 rooms for Marriott Suites. Adjacent to it, there is a... Um, uh, Holiday Inn right. and Suites that's uh, been approved. We expect to go into construction later this year. We are currently in the review process for a Hilton Garden and Suites. Very good. And uh, it's about the same size, right in that same little cluster of area adjacent to the Embassy Suites. I assume we probably would have had more on site now if it hadn't been for the dip in the economy. Oh, we years would ago. have. We absolutely would have. We had several projects that got right up to the brink. And with the economy failing, they just could not pull the trigger. They, they were, it just wouldn't have worked. They would have been a failure, and they saw it coming, sure. so they pulled back. Is this an overlay or an underlay? It will be an underlay. It will be a base zone. Okay. So we will, we will, we will look to rezone some areas from uh, commercial highway or uh, light industrial to MU, mixed use district, assuming we, we do create this. All right. We're still calling it proposed. I think in my, my little questions answer, I'll call it proposed uh, mixed use every time I refer to it. Okay. Because I don't want to give the idea that it has been adopted yet or that it's a foregone conclusion sure. that it will be. Are there any changes proposed to the boundaries of the four existing GDO districts? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, a couple of things we're looking at is um, changing some of the area that is uh, GDO four. First of all, there are four GDO districts. Okay. And they are all a little bit different. Uh, GDO 1 is the larger one, and it's the area out around the MC Suites and Avenues. All right. It allows for taller buildings, uh, assuming the uh, base zone allows the height. Uh, it allows for um, a, pretty much whatever is allowed in underlying zones, except for some very obnoxious uses. For instance, we, we did exclude things like slaughterhouses, 
stockyards. Excluded, things. right. That's already excluded I understand. from anywhere in the gateway and in the gateway one. The gateway two is uh, an area that is uh, more uh, proximate to the battlefield. It has a height limitation of 35 foot. Over uh, around Wilkinson Pike, I presume. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And it actually extends down Thompson Lane. Okay. Uh, it extends all the way down uh, to the uh, YMCA. Okay. Uh, and you'll note that there's some buildings that are taller than 35 foot in that area. Then uh, GDO 3 consists of land that the city uh, formerly owned, where the hospital lies, the um, Merceboro Medical Clinic, uh, places like that. And then GDO 4 is the area pretty much from uh, Stones River back to uh, Memorial Boulevard, along what used to be Loki Avenue. The difference there is that's a, uh, an area that is really redevelopment. Some of the boundaries we're looking to change, the um, Oaks Shopping Center, where um, uh, Jason's Deli is, for yes. example, it is in GDO 3 because it's formerly owned by the city. Okay. But it no longer fits the profile of what we're wanting to see in the GDO 3. So we're looking to um, uh, look to amend it to put in GDO 1. It's more like GDO okay. 1. Uh, it's more like the avenues than it is the hospital. All right. is, that the, is that all four that you've named? Uh, yes, it's all, all four. Right. As, uh, as we wind up, I'm we'll, uh, going to ask you again, where is this information available? Remind okay. us again of the uh, website. Information will be posted on the city's website at www.murfreesborotn.gov. That's M-U-R-F-R-E-E-S-B-O-R-O-T-N.gov. Uh, you can get that information uh, from our website. You can call, come to our office in person, pick it up. Uh, you can email me. I'll be glad to uh, send you something uh, like our questions and answers. And uh, you're welcome to give me a phone call at 936-441. And remind us again about the August 19th meeting, the details of that. Right. On August 19th, we're going to have a neighborhood meeting. It will be an open house type meeting. It will be from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock at the uh, Chamber of Commerce right here in the Gateway. 3050 and Medical Center Parkway. 3050 Medical Center Parkway. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph Adelot, mm -hmm. our planning director for the city of Murfreesboro, has been our guest for Murfreesboro Storytellers. We thank you for joining us.